Soccer fans, welcome into the beautiful Rio Tinto Stadium for this USL Championship matchup between the Real Monarchs and the Colorado Springs Switchbacks FC. I'm Landon Southwick, joined alongside my partner Tom Hackett uh, for this afternoon's call. And we thank you for tuning in here on ESPN+. Plus. Tonight should be an interesting it's hot, Tom. The altitude is not a thing that's really a factor between these two sides coming from Colorado and Utah. Both teams coming off a loss and both looking to see if they can figure out this group stage, especially the Monarchs who are on the bottom of the tables. Uh, coming off a championship win as well. So uh, it's, worth that, uh, it's worth to note, I, I should say, that the Monarchs have a talent of players that are more than capable and they've uh, been unlucky as of late, as we look at some of the storylines, this is the first of four meetings, Land, and both teams are going to be very familiar with each other by the time this season is all said and done. And that's one of those things you're going to get with group settings, right? And and two at here in Utah and two in Colorado Springs. So, But both are coming off loss, and Colorado has the Monarchs number. Six, eight, and two all-time is the Monarchs record against Colorado Springs. But interesting to note, the Monarchs won both meetings last year, and in 2018, Colorado won, Springs won both games. So both teams kind of in that situation. How will 2020 shake out? We know it's been a different year, but let's check out the starting lineups for both sides, starting with the visiting Colorado Springs Switchbacks FC. Sean Melvin will be in goal for the Switchbacks. Uh, Servos, uh, Watubaye, Dispay, and Burt across the back for Kuramoto, Andrew Lewis, and Labisi, the South African headline, the midfield with Luna Daniels and Valeski up top. It's a dangerous lineup, headlined, uh, in my opinion anyway, by Christian Valeski, the number nine he can score. Uh, and if uh, the Monarchs aren't careful, he could have their number certainly this evening. Big task once again for Moberg and Pay. In, uh, at the centre-back positions for the Monarchs. Landon. A solid side for Alan Koch as he rolls out a side, very similar to last week, uh, with a change in the midfield, adding Lewis into the starting lineup, who made a substitute appearance last week. Now let's check out the starting lineup for the Monarchs. This starting li lineup is brought to you by MarketStar. Explore something more at MarketStar. Visit MarketStar.com for careers. Jimmy Slayton remains in goal. Andrew Brody will play right back. Moberg and Pay, as mentioned earlier, at centre back. Noah Powder is returning from suspension. He'll play left back. What a big addition that is. Farnsworth, Brown, Blake, the captain, Davis Coffey, and Sierra Kowski gets his first start for the Monarchs after being moved from Portland Timbers 2. A solid lineup for the Monarchs and Hamas and Alavi, a side that's looking for their first goal here in 2020. We're going to take a first commercial break, and we'll be back with Kick next. Today's match is brought to you by America First Credit Union, the official credit union of the Real Monarchs. By MarketStar. Explore something more at MarketStar. Visit MarketStar.com for careers. By Stewart Healthcare, the official health care provider of the Rail Monarchs. Visit stewardutah.org. And by Zions Bank, for banking that helps you tackle every financial challenge. Zions Bank is for you. We all have needs, hopes, and dreams. Things to do, places to go, and a life to live. And whatever goals you have, America First is here to help you achieve them. We're here to provide the financial tools and services you need to take care of your family, your home, or your business. We're here to help you keep moving forward. Whatever you need for what matters most, we're here to help. America First, federally insured by NCUA. Hey, Justin, Jeanette, what's going on? Hey, DJ, we're just trying to find out ways to keep fans in our cell gear. And I'm contemplating how to use this F-150 to fight hunger in Utah. Oh, I got it. Have this sweet RSL neck wrap. And thanks to Ford, you can have one too. All proceeds are going to go to help the Utah Food Bank feed families in need. We're hoping to raise $50,000. Fashion that fights hunger? Now this is a winning combination. Can I get a high five? Really?
I stay for a ride. Hey, you're Craig Swat. You know, not everyone sees you when you're on two wheels. So stay alert and always keep your eyes on the path ahead. That's good advice. See you at the top. Nice shorts. You can't always predict what might sneak up and catch you by surprise. If you've been hurt by the carelessness of others, choose the law firm that will go the distance to get you the settlement you deserve. Craig Swap and Associates, one call, that's all. Back here at Rio Tinto Stadium as we get close to kick here momentarily. Players just out on the pitch. Let's check out the players to watch in tonight's game. Tom, and there's a few guys that we need to keep an eye on, and this is one of them. And you talked a little bit about him in the pregame earlier, but he is a guy that is very capable of scoring goals. Anytime you wear the number nine, the expectation is incredibly high. And for Christian Valeski, he's already scored a goal this season. He's a talent both in the air and on the ground. Uh, and like I said earlier, look, it's a big task, as, we, as it will be for most weeks for the centre-back pairing that Hamerson Alave puts out there. In this case, it's James Moberg and Taylor Pay. They need to uh, have eyes on Valeski at all times. If not, it uh, could well be another loss coming the Monarchs' way uh, at at their home field. Kind of their home field, I should say. And, and a home away from home, I guess Certainly. you should say. Started out here in, in the first two seasons, then moved in that third season to Zions Bank Stadium and has had have had success at home. Um, and have been very consistent at home throughout their career. Under Hamas and Olave, 16-3-4 at home. Uh, let's check out the player to watch for the Monarchs, and a guy that is back from suspension. Noah Powder is his name, number 53. He'll start at the left-back position, but at times he may well look more like a left winger. Much like Andrew Brody did last week on the right-hand side, Noah Powder will attempt to dominate and control every aspect of the left-hand side of the pitch this afternoon. What a talented player. We were having conversations off-air, and... Uh, we both agreed, Landon, that if, if Real Salt Lake, the, the first division team, are going to make a move uh, at any of these Monarchs players, Noah Powder's name is atop that list. Certainly uh, a big addition for Hamas and Alave and the Monarchs. Very talented player and one to keep an eye on tonight as both teams are out on the pitch. Colorado Springs in their all-white kits with the blue stripes down the front. Monarchs in their blue kits with the yellow trim. Monarchs are going to be moving from south to north here at Rio Tinto Stadium or right to left across your TV screen. Again, we'd like to thank all those of you tuning in today as we are underway or maybe underway. <laughs> False alarm as we'll uh, reset things. What happened there? Center referee Michael Radchuk did not like what he saw on the kickoff. And we're going to go back to zeros. Now we're going to get going. Bodie Davis, recent homegrown signing for the Monarchs and the commentator's curse, getting him as he signed with Real Salt Lake. The Kaysville, Utah native. This ball is going to be swung along the back line for Colorado Springs. Switchbacks are a side that are 1-1 one, one at and O oh on the season so far. Their last game, a loss to New Mexico United in a game that they felt like they should have won. Let's check out the referees for this afternoon's match. Center referee Michael Radchuk, Stephen McGonagall, Karsten Gilwald, and Jordan Downs is our fourth official. Ball played forward. Taylor Pay there to push Daniels off the ball, and the foul's called. And it'll be a free kick coming for the switchbacks. The opening 10 minutes of this contest, Landon, is going to be very important. Both teams obviously coming off a loss, as we discussed earlier. Going to desperately need uh, some possession to calm the nerves, find their feet, and uh, control the tempo. It seems like the first opening minute or two, the switchbacks are certainly on top. Monarchs in need of possession. As of right now, they're chasing. And at 2 o'clock, here in the desert of Rio Tinto Stadium, the sun is blaring. The last thing you need is to be chasing a football round all 
afternoon long. Yeah, and, and one of the things that we didn't talk about, it's in the mid-90s right now here in Utah. That's one of the challenges for any team to have to come and play, and I know we've seen that in, with the MLS's back tournaments. Guys just dripping sweat because of the humidity here. You've got a lot of that dry heat and tough, a tough situation to be in as we're in the third minute of play. The foul is going to be called as Daniels will take down Bodie Davis. Recently signed this week to the Monarchs. Congratulations. So you can Davis. see the head coach, Alan Koch, in his, essentially in his second season. Done a little bit last year for the switchbacks, but second head coach in switchbacks history and the 2018 USL Championship Coach of the Year. Head coach Thomas and Alave of the Monarchs. Real Salt Lake Legends as well as now USL Championship Head Coach. A throw in coming for Burt's. Burt's been one of those mainstays for the switchbacks. And a very talented player, one that you'll see get up the wings as well during the match today. Fans on in attendance here at Rio Tinto Stadium. It was limited to a thousand fans as fans are still trickling in here on the near side, just below us. So that will be pinged off Daniels by Powder and it'll be a throw in for the Monarchs. They were given a card walking into the stadium talking about how masks must be actively or worn at all times except, except when actively drinking or eating in your seats. And then be rather Boats hard on social distancing. <laughs> be rather hard to uh, eat or drink with a mask on. I, I understand the method behind that madness. Monarchs just having a hard time finding the football, finding possession. Credit the switchbacks for controlling, albeit haven't been able to get into any dangerous positioning. That may change now. Flicking the ball around, having uh, having the Monarchs chase in this heat. Luna, his back swung. Wadabaye, big switch over to Burt. Burt trying to play it forward. Power puts the pressure. Davis, the midfield stripe. Play it back to Farnsworth, an academy product to an academy product. Monarch's known for having plenty of academy talents running through the pipeline. So we have a handful of players out on the field that are academy players but with the two most recent being Farnsworth and Davis. And I, I need to update the number, but I know it's more than 54 players have graduated and moved on from the academy to play professional soccer. And a handful of them here with the Monarchs. Monarch sides with a couple changes from last game. Sierkowski getting the starts this afternoon after making a, a substitution appearance in the second half and, and one that was a pretty good substitution experience or excuse me, appearance for him, except for maybe his uh, errant tackle on the keeper that many called for a late, red car on. Late challenge. I, uh, I do think it warranted a yellow card. Uh, don't think it was a red first-time offender. Uh, and he, he curled his legs up so that he didn't make contact with his, with his boot. Instead, he made contact with his knee. Moberg trying to play it forward, trying to find Kyle Coffey. It'll be interesting to see, Landon, how the Monarchs go about attacking this afternoon. Last week against San Diego, they were very active down both flanks. They had a hard time attacking anywhere up the spine. I imagine Hamerson Alave, head coach of the Monarchs, would have had some conversations midweek with a few of his players, urging them to take a few more risks down the middle. The fastest avenue to goal, they say. One of the things you're noticing, Tom, is the Monarchs are really playing with five back with Pay playing as the lone true center back, but Moberg and Farnsworth alongside him, and Brody and Powder sitting really high along the wings as we're going to see Powder get an opportunity on the ball, but too far out in front of him, and it'll go out for a throw-in. Well, the Monarchs are fortunate. They have, uh, they have somebody like Taylor Pay, a veteran uh, in the world of soccer, and uh, played a sloppy turnover, first chance for the Monarchs here. Sierra Kowski finding Sam Brown. Ball's going to be swung wide to Brody, and the advantage will be played, and the Monarchs are going to get a free kick straight, almost straight on, just a little bit to the left. It'll be a free kick coming 
for Jack Blake. I'm not sure that I saw the foul, and I, I'm not sure I would have brought it back to the foul. It looked like the Monarchs had an advantage going wide to Brody, but nonetheless, Radchuk brings it back, and Monarchs are going to get a set-piece opportunity. Sierra Kowski just clipped late, I believe, and uh, look, Blake had a few opportunities from almost identical range as we take a look at the foul. It was just a late clip of the ankles that head referee decided to uh, to bring back, understood. Blake had a few of these opportunities from about this range last week, Landon, and he rocketed them into the wall. So uh, hopefully he's learned from his mistakes a week ago and uh, we'll be able to uh, pepper Sean Melvin the switchbacks. Four-man wall, Blake and Powder standing over it. Powder very capable of striking this as well. Either guy dangerous from this distance. Jack Blake going to take it. He runs up, takes a deflection off the wall, and that one looked like it was on frame, and by the reaction of Jack Blake, I think he thought so as well, but takes a deflection off the wall as the wall was able to do their job, and it'll go out for a corner kick. First of the afternoon for the Monarchs. Much better connection from Blake as we have a look at the replay. Sean Melvin diving to his right, concerned up until it took a deflection. Nice work from the switchbacks. Making contact. Never a fun job in the world of football, sitting in that wall, standing in that wall. Got to keep an eye on Taylor Pay. As he has the height. Blake plays it inside the six. Going to be knocked out to Davis. Davis plays it wide to Blake. Blake tries to swing it again first time. And the ball is deflected. Monarchs will reset with Jimmy Slayton made his professional debut last week in the one nothing loss. Four saves on the season, one goal conceded. I thought, I thought Slayton offered a fair bit last week. Um, he looked composed, controlled, uh, knew what he was doing, and, and came up with a couple big saves in the meantime. So obviously disappointing that he conceded the goal, didn't have a, a clean sheet, but he'll be hoping to make amends this evening. This afternoon, I should say. MLS is back, and so is RSL's winning ways. Watch the re-air of the Claret and Cobalt's dominant 7 nothing win over Minnesota United Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on KMYU. Brody coming back from his recent loan with FC Pingsgau, Sal Felden in the Austria 3rd Division. Beautiful setting out oh, there in Austria. Have you seen incredible photos? pitch. Sierakowski, good hold up play there. Gets it to Blake. Blake trying to ping it across to Brody. Errant pass, and it's going to start a counterattack for Luna and the Switchbacks FC. He'll decide to hold it up as the Monarchs with that, really that five back. What we saw throughout the 2020 playoffs is a foul is going to be called on Blake at the midfield stripe. That foul came after frustration from turning the ball over, but... What we saw through that last Monarchs attack was the class from Noah Powder pinpointing a ball to the feet of his captain. Uh, last week, you know, we didn't see a ton of that for the Monarchs, and I think Noah Powder comes in and, and offers a lot for, uh, for, for his team. A late challenge there from Moberg, as he knew he was caught with his hand in the cookie jar. As he slid in late, tried to pull up the landing gear, but was unable to do so. Ball trying to play forward. Coffee found himself in an offside position. Well, Coffee made the run. It was a good run. There was space in behind the back four and the goalkeeper for the switch backs. It was just a late ball. Sam Brown in the heart of the midfield for the Monarchs. Couldn't quite pick him up in time, but nice thought nonetheless. And Tom, that's one of those things that Coffee needs to do better in this game. He was really non a non-factor last week up top, and he really needs to find him in a position where he's finding service from his teammates. Certainly. He needs to make the runs, and then the midfield for the Monarchs need to need to keep their eyes up and, and, and honor those runs. Service is a big part of any forward's role, and uh, we saw last night, if you were to watch the Real Salt Lake match, Douglas Martinez just had a hard time getting any service towards him and hence found himself constantly being floated out to the right wing. And you're seeing Sierra Kowski has dropped off a little bit from Coffee, And they're playing it almost, one's playing off the, ba the shoulder of the other. 
sitting maybe in that pocket. Burt with the throw-in, up over the head. It's going to take a bounce, falls to Moberg. Moberg, soft touch there. He'll go to ground. A good challenge there. Is Daniel slow to get up? But the Monarchs are able to get back in position. I'm not entirely sure as to why that wasn't a foul, to be frank. It, it looked quite like late. He, yeah, it looked like he got ball, though. Maybe that's what the referee deems as Powder will play it back to Farnsworth. Farnsworth, another one of those players that made his professional debut last week. Five players in total made their professional debut for the Monarchs. Slayton, Farnsworth, Davis, Jimenez, or excuse me, Jimenez making his debut here in the USL Championship, and Harris. Jimenez having played in Argentina in the first division. Taylor Payne needs to be better there. It's a nice challenge. Brody battling. He'll keep the ball at his feet. Looking towards Sierra Kowski. Coffee going to make a run. And battling on the backside of Dispay. Taylor Pay. Another nice Salt Lake City native. Veteran at that. He's been around the block a few times, hasn't he? Played for Real Salt Lake. Had a few uh, stints with the Monarchs and at 28 years of age. He's the glue to that back four for Hamas and Olave. Good passage of play, though, this last couple minutes for the Monarchs. They're starting to get into some dangerous areas and uh, we'll be hoping to, to pepper Sean Melvin in that switchbacks net. Give credit so far to the switchbacks as they've done a good job keeping things settled as Coffey's trying to play off the shoulder and make things dangerous there for the switchbacks. Good tight ball movement there from Colorado Springs as Pay comes up with the challenge on Daniels. And it's going to be a reset for switchbacks FC. Have to give a shout out to both supporters groups. I know there's not many of the Monarch supporters group here today with the Wasatch Legion. As you'll see the patch on the Monarch sleeve representing Wasatch Legion. And then the Trailheads supporter group. Very animated well, Trailhead supporter group. Awesome supporter group. Hopefully tuning in this afternoon. Very passionate, and that's all, that's all now, they can ask for. And I love how they have a name for where they stand in base camp behind South Goal. No, they weren't there last week on Saturday. But their normal location. So if you're tuning in from that supporters group, thank you. And excited to have fans back in the stadiums at some point. More than just a limited number. I certainly appreciate those that are willing to come out and cheer on their selective sides nonetheless. We're in a unique time. This ball is going to be played back. Melvin is going to rush forward to it. Big ball played up over top. Switchback's not afraid to play that long ball out of the out of the back line. They've done it and attempted it on a number of occasions. They've had some success, uh, not a ton. Uh, although it seems as though that's part of the game plan tonight to see if they can find those runners off the shoulders of the centre backs of the Monarchs and. Find one-on-one -on -one opportunities with Jimmy Slayton. Although, look, that ball playing from that centre-back position over the top is that's about as difficult to pass as, as you'll find in the game of soccer. Ball played through. Nice ball in Lewis, but the flag is up. Monarchs are having a hard time landing pinching space in between the midfield as they attack through the spine. I think it's pretty evident that they're attempting to go more central this game against the switchbacks in comparison to what we saw last week against San Diego. But execution's been, been subpar, to say the least, throughout the first 17 minutes of this contest. Look, last week, a lot of the conversation we had was about the 17-week hiatus that the USL and all of their teams experienced due to the novel pandemic, the novel coronavirus. Uh, I expect a better game from an ex ex execution standpoint, pardon me. As you get him right off, <laughs> as Farnsworth unable to get the pass out from under his, under his legs. 
Sometimes that happens. 17th minute of play, still scoreless. NWSL Challenge Cup is had, headed into its stretch run. Be sure to tune in to the championship match next Sunday on CBS to see who takes home the title. The NWSL Challenge Cup. Turnover there by the Monarchs. Counterattack and numbers coming for Switchbacks FC. Servos will be taken down by Brody, and there's some frustration by Brody, I think, a little bit. Servos from Andorra. Speaking of uh, a beautiful part of the country, part of the world, excuse me. Ooh, nice cutback there. Ball played in just across the face of goal. And my goodness, did not miss by much. Aiden, Aiden Daniels. Daniels. There he turned Taylor Pay inside out. And if it weren't for the final finish, went right, cut back on his... So he went left, I should say, cut back onto his right with his right foot again inside out. Taylor Pay had no idea where he was in the final. Finished the final shot on goal, let him down. I blame uh, a lack of football. 17-week break before last week. If you're Alan Koch, though, Tom, that was promising. Certainly. And that was probably executed to the textbook there as he was able to turn Pay. And top, Taylor Pay was like a, a top just being spun back and forth, not sure which way the defender was. Certainly. No, they found a uh, dangerous position, one-on-one. -on -one. Taylor Pay running towards his own goal. It's a dangerous position for any centre-back to be in. Nobody wants to experience it. And fortunately, Daniel's shot for the Monarchs went just wide. But certainly the best opportunity of the match thus far as we're midway through the 18-minute point. Switchbacks look more and more comfortable as this game goes on. The Monarchs, I've noticed, struggling in similar areas that they that they struggled last week against San Diego. They're okay getting the ball into the attacking third, Landon, but they're not able to create any real dangerous opportunities from, uh, from their positioning. And I, I, I'm trying to figure out if that's a lack of space and credit to the switchbacks, if the movement in the attacking third. Remember Sierra Kowski, who's kind of fronting the strike force for the Monarchs. He's he's a pretty brand new player for them. He he joined them after being with the Portland Timbers 2 a day before their first match last week. And maybe there's just still some chemistry that needs to be sorted out for the Monarchs as they enter their attacking third. One of the things that you haven't seen really is that creativity. And that's going to rely on a guy like Jack Blake to kind of pull the strings a little bit to see if he can get those diagonal balls that are cutting through multiple lines and not just these short balls or these deep, just long bombs, but something that's going to cut through a, the lines of the midfield up into those attacking players. Well, I certainly think, look, they lost Douglas Martinez to Real Salt Lake. He was signed to the first team, and the Monarchs still trying to find... Sierakowski out wide. He's inside the box. Heavy first touch, and it crosses the end line as a big opportunity from there for the Monarchs goes by the wayside as Coffey was sitting inside the box waiting for the cross to come in. But that's better and a little bit more of what the Monarchs and Hamas and Alave are trying to find. As you can see with the Monarchs spread out really paint to paint on both sides of the field with their outside backs. Certainly a nice ball played into Sierra Kowski, but at this level of football, there's no, the, the, you, you cannot have a heavy touch like that. You know, you've got to be better. Sierra Kowski will be kicking himself. Hamerson Olave will be kicking Sierra Kowski for him, I'm <laughs> sure. I mean, just frustration grown. You finally get into a, a good, a good dangerous part of the pitch. Coffee make, was making a good run into the middle of, the penalty spot, and it just it should have been a simple touch, and uh, it wasn't. It was heavy. Monarchs trying to play a ball up over top to Kyle Coffey, the former University of Washington Husky. I will say, Coffey looks dangerous through the first uh, quarter of this contest, as opposed to last week. He's, he's not afraid to make runs in and behind the back line and see if he can operate in the space as Noah Powder. That's the sort of class... Powder trying to get in behind the defense to Sierra Kowski. Ball just did not have enough pace on it. Maybe the pitch just wasn't quite wet enough. Give Farnsworth credit there, getting himself in a good position to get around. 
George Labisi. Davis. He'll go forward. He's stripped of the ball. They just ran into a brick wall, did Davis there. That's the inexperienced coming on. The Jamaican. Lewis took it right off his foot. And, you know, something we have to talk about is a few of these academy guys, this is their first real taste of something where they're not probably oftentimes the best player on the pitch. I know we had a, had a conversation pregame talking about that. Some of these guys are used to being the man on the field, the guy that's doing it all and very capable of beating everybody. And in this game, they're a guy, just another player on the pitch, as we see a foul called as Farnsworth fouls Valeski. I thought you saw it there with, with number 80, Bodie Davis, who took possession, had space. Uh, if he had a couple more games under his belt, he cer certainly would have cut back onto his right, tried to find somebody centrally. Instead, went down, uh, w went straight into three switchbacks defenders, into a brick wall, and uh, there was no avenue. However, at the academy level, if he had have done that, there was a good chance he would have beaten three players and found himself in on goal. And that's one of those changes that these guys are making and and you know the usl championship and the way that it's structured now is really giving guys like him an opportunity a chance to really go through the ranks where in the past and we could talk about a guy like nick beesler a guy that made it out of college out of notre dame into the mls and fell out of the mls and really if it weren't for the USL championship, wouldn't have had an opportunity to revitalize his career. Kane played for the Monarchs, was the captain of the side, and has now just signed his second deal with Real Salt Lake and a new three-year deal. And, and those are the type of players that are going to get the true benefit from this league. Nick Beasler, a versatile type, can play in the midfield, can also play at the centre-back position. He offers a fair bit for Freddie Juarez up there at the MLS level, and Congratulations to him. Obviously comes from a rich footballing family as the Monarchs make their way. Another nice run by Coffey up the right flank. Ball out wide. Nice tackle there. But it'll be a corner kick one for the Monarchs. As Watabaye tried to get there. Did get there. Beautiful sliding challenge with the ins or the inside or outside, excuse me, of his right foot but unable to keep it from going for the second corner of the afternoon for the Monarchs. This time it's going to be from the far side. Here in the 25th minute of play, Jack Blake still out there. Next to him, Noah Powder. Inside the box, Sierra Kowski, short corner taken. Powder's going to run towards the touchline, trying to find Coffey. Takes a, takes a deflection, and Jack Blake calling for the handball. Here's where I have a problem with the short corner. Landon. Opportunity here. If Davis can swing it in, he picks up his head looking forward, finds Moberg, drops it off to Coffee. Coffee shot deflected by Kurimoto. But a decent look and something that materialized by a nice chest. Bring it down off the chest of James Moberg, one of those veterans here for the Monarchs. Nice passage of play. I was going to say earlier, I, I don't understand the short corner when it's 2v2. I understand it when you have the number advantage, but that last corner, Blake played the ball to Powder, and albeit beat the first defender, although that's not going to happen every time. If it's 2v2, much like it is currently, put the ball in. Ball played inside the box. No one at the six. Moberg was making a late run, just not able to get to that spot in time. He'll come to take the the throw in as he's a long throw. It's the second of three corners, Landon, where it's been a nice ball into the area for the Monarchs. The first occasion, the captain, Blake, played a devilish ball into the area, and on that occasion, Noah Powder put his left peg and a bit of curve and dip into it. There was just no one there. You know, that's where you'd like to see the likes of Taylor Pay making these runs from the top of the box with momentum, trying to glance the ball into the back of the onion bag as San Diego Loyal had success. Moberg, long throw inside the box, looking for Taylor Pay, falls inside the area, and Watabaye has to bike it up over goal to make sure that one doesn't fall inside the area. 27th minute of play, Monarch's going to get their fourth corner. If we could replicate that movement inside the box for this upcoming corner, I think the Monarchs will have success in the air. It's just the lack of movement previously has cost them. Ball's going to get played in. Jack Blake looking back. Stick! And Mober, or excuse me, Pay was there. 
Oh, Sean Melvin not happy with Ta with Taylor Pay. I don't know that I saw anything from Pay that was out of normal. Pay looked like he got to the spot before Melvin. Well, I think Tay, uh, Pay rather as got we'll his gone to the ball. As we'll get a replay look at this. Pay yeah. got there and got punched. Like, oh, but the falling over, sure. maybe he felt like a little disrespect there. We get a little scuffle, but we'll get things figured out. As Pace getting a conversation from center referee Michael Radchuk. Goalkeepers don't like much contact. <laughs> Not at all. Sean Melvin has some size to him, though, and a solid keeper so far this season. Just coming off winning the save of the week for his save on Weehan. It was a beautiful hand he was able to stick out and deflect the ball as Moberg's tracking back. Moberg's gonna get there first in front of Luna and a ball will go out. Be a throw in coming for Switchbacks FC. Switchbacks having some success on that counter attack, Landon. Monarchs are having a hard time tracking players, making runs uh, down both flanks, and uh, it seems to be the strategy for the switchbacks at the minute. Ball wide. Played inside the box. No one home. It's going to bounce across the end line for a goal kick. Don't miss a minute of the action in 2020. Sign up today and get alerts all year long by following your club on ESPN.com. Search for the Real Monarchs or the Colorado Springs Switchbacks FC and click fo the follow button to keep up with the latest news and scores, plus get reminders on the Monarchs and Switchbacks FC next matches. Go to ESPN.com and click follow for your club. Mabisi. He's going to foul Farnsworth, and Farnsworth gets drilled with a ball right across his head by Lewis. I think it was unintentional, but it was one of those where you really quickly react like, oh, no, you didn't just do that. But a nice friendly, friendly uh, exchange after that from Lewis. As you can see, the foul here clips him on that left leg, and oh. then the ball comes right into Farnsworth's head. Farnsworth, uh, a nicer bloke than I am. Let me tell you, I would not have been happy. I we were in Farnsworth's shoes. Farnsworth picks up his head, finds Coffee. Coffee's in an onside position, trying to turn Wadabaye. Wadabaye does a good job to make him, force him to keep his back to goal. Be a throw in for the Monarchs. I really am impressed with Kyle Coffey and what he's been able to do so far throughout this match. I mean, he's making dangerous runs into space. And uh, the midfield of the Monarchs, the fullbacks, they're offering those runs and they're having some success as Mobo launches another. Inside the box, ball. towards Pay, just over his head, still inside the box. Coffee, shot! And that one's in the back of the nets. The Monarchs take a 1 0 lead here in the 30th minute of play. Beyond a goal from Kyle Coffee. Lovely first touch, controlled it delicately and then put the right peg through it. Laces into the top left corner. Impressive finish from Kyle Coffey, who I believe has been the best player on the pitch for the Monarchs. Rewarded for his effort. What a finish from young Kyle Coffey. Top left bin and he's animated as the team makes its way to the water break, the hydration break. And you've got to love that finish as we're going to get a replay look at his shots. Moberg with the long corner. Taylor Pay went up and competed again. That's what you ask of your centre back. And poor first touch. Andrew Brody finds Coffee and bullseye. Top left bins. Kyle Coffee, Sean Melvin with no answer. Very impressive finish. <laughs> and go get some water. Yeah, you deserve it, young lad. <laughs> One of those things that that sequence really was, you saw the corner kick or the long throw in, excuse me, like a corner kick being dangerous the last time Moberg threw it in this time. This time, Colorado Springs did a good job defending it, but it really was let down by that heavy touch inside the box, the giveaway right to Andrew Brody. Andrew Brody with the one touch 
falling right to Kyle Coffey, and he made sure that one was not going to miss as he buried that one in the back of the net. I believe that was Luna who had that heavy touch. You would have preferred to have that one back. Difficult job nonetheless. Look, the ball rockets at your feet. You try your best to control it. It just so happens to fall to Andrew Brody, but that's what started it to me. The long throw in, Taylor Pay. He's not going to win every ball in the air, but you just want him to compete. Start, start some pinball in there, and it, it happened to fall to Brody, who found Coffey. And again, the finish, an exquisite finish from Kyle Coffey, who's rewarded for his efforts throughout the first 30 odd minutes, 33 odd minutes of this game. He's made a number of runs in and behind the switchbacks back four and he's looked dangerous and on this occasion he finds space inside the area and again what a finish from Kyle Coffey very impressive Sean Melvin had no chance no and that's one of those in a situation where a bad giveaway like that turns into a quick instant shot and those keepers sometimes I mean they take the the stats of a goal conceded, but there was not much he could do in a situation like that. And Coffey's a guy that will most of the time finish shots as he's going to get another opportunity inside the box, but dealt with and cleared away, but a corner kick given by the Switchbacks FC. Monarchs going to get their fifth corner kick of the afternoon. Colorado Springs without a shot. And without a corner kick so far. Well, they had oh, excuse one me, the shot. one shots. I, I stand corrected. A Aiden beautiful Daniels. effort there, Aiden Daniels, yes, to turn him. 34th minute of play. Corner kick coming this time from Noah Powder. Conversation at the top of the box is Pay and Burtz are going to get a warning. Taylor, play, Taylor Pay, pardon me, is the big threat here for the Monarchs. He's... Big center back. I like the size of 54 Sam Brown. And Sierra Kowski can throw some weight around as well. It seems like Sierra Kowski trying to block Pay's man. Another good ball. Ball inside the box. Headed away by the switchbacks. And it'll be a throw in for the Monarchs. And another long throw in coming from James Moberg. And these essentially have added corner kick number six, seven, and eight from this position. Moberg will throw it in. Monarchs still have some of their tall trees inside the box. This one goes just near the PK spot, headed up, and Melvin will collect. Ball out wide to Burtz. Lubisi. Lubisi with nowhere to go. A pair of West Coast matchups highlight your Sunday schedule as the USL Championship continues its 2020 season. The Donner Pass Derby kicks off at 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2 as both Sacramento Republic FC and Reno 1868 look to take early control of Group A. An hour later at 10 Eastern on ESPN Deportes, San Diego Loyal SC take on LA Galaxy 2 in Group A action. Don't miss a single second of Sunday action on ESPN Family of Networks. Spoke about the player to watch for the switchbacks, Landon. Christian Valeski, number nine. Just feel as though if they're going to score a goal in this contest, he's going to have a part to play in it. He's had a hard time finding the football up until this point. And uh, the switchbacks, they need to get Valeski. That's would be shocked if that's a yellow card. I'm not sure if it was he's intentional. Just it was one of those, though, that a big opportunity, and I believe sometimes that's the case. Certainly. Giving a, a great opportunity is he's going to get a stern talk into. I'm sure this is going to be the last warning, but if Burt gets that ball, Burt is up that flank and in a very good position to provide service as he gets his final warning. Luscious locks of 82 <laughs> pounds worth. It must be nice to have a <laughs> set of hair on you like that, Landon. Very jealous. Monarch's going to put their line of confrontation upon the 18. Davis is going to be the one-man wall. Labisi will stand over it. South Africa native. Switchbacks FC with almost everybody up on that line of confrontation. Ball does not beat the first defender. Headed away by Sam Brown. Labisi will be disappointed with that delivery as he can have a second crack here. 
Ball comes back inside the box. Again, made the same mistake. Got to find a way to get that ball towards the back post. Monarchs defending the front post well. <coughs> there was never going to be a chance. Two mistakes in a row from Labisi on that right flank. Trying to whip a ball in on his preferred left. Would have loved to have them back if he could. And if you're Alan Koch, something you want to see is better service here as we get late in this first half and moving into the second half. And I'm sure that's one of the conversations they'll have at that halftime break is that service because Valeski really has had none today. And any set piece opportunities they have had have been played like that we just saw. They've had they've had minor success on the counter attack. Again, their best opportunity of the game, Aiden Daniels uh, turned Taylor Pay inside out and a poor finish, pushed the ball past the back post. But uh, their best opportunities, and, and when they look most dangerous, certainly on the counter attack, trying to catch the Monarchs off guard, who have, for the most part, controlled this first half and have been rewarded uh, with the goal from Kyle Coffey. Uh, beautiful finish from Coffey, put the ball into the top left corner. He's uh, going to be dreaming about that. Ooh, I would have a I cup of coffee. You've been thinking about that line, haven't you? Or no. have you used that before? Have some sugar and cream? I prefer no sugar <laughs> and cream, kidding. personally. I'm not a coffee drinker, so this is not even a good conversation <laughs> to be having. <laughs> uh, someone has to say it, right? Someone had to say it, and it was always going to be you. I know. It's part of your job. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the accent. I've got to crack some jokes, right? You are a father. <laughs> Dad jokes will appear will at some point. Powder, nice bending ball inside the box. Brody was open at the back of the 18 on the far side, but ball was cut out before it got him for, got to him by Siervos. We've seen on a few occasions the build-up to that Noah Powder cross, which was devilish. Moberg, the class of the centre-back, playing the ball to Noah Powder across the pitch, works in favour of the Monarchs. One of the challenges that I've seen for the switchbacks so far is it really seems like once they get the ball in a situation, there's always two Monarchs defenders ready to collapse on them. Kurimoto right there, Kurimoto, excuse me, with the ball, and then quickly two defenders collapsed on him. Correct. If, if the switchbacks can find a way to get out of some initial pressure from the Monarchs, there's going to be plenty of space for them to operate in. They just haven't been able to do so. Noah Powder, the class. Space opens up for Brody. We know how much he likes to run. Brody on top of the 18. Cuts back. Shot. And he's going to score. Andrew Brody doubles the Monarchs lead. That's all set up from Noah Powder. The class of the left back. Not afraid to cut into the central position of the field. Beats one. Switch backs midfield. All of a sudden, the paddocks opened for no uh, for Andrew Brody, I should say. And as mentioned during the call, we know how much number 45 likes to run. Pretty simple cut back onto his non-preferred left peg and bottom left-hand corner she goes. 2-0 the Monarchs. Granted, they've been the better team in this first half. 2-0 the better. The switchbacks in desperate need now, Landon. They need some answers. Where are they going to find it from? Because as of right now, the Monarchs are on top. Easy cut back on his left. Look, it's far too easy. And you know, one of the things that Andrew Brody, he just seems to be riding with that confidence, went on loan to FC Pingsgau Salfeld in, in Austria in the third division, a team that's fan owns. And, and if you haven't checked them out, go check out that club. Um, but the interesting thing is he just has that confidence. It, it just feels like it hasn't left him. Um, and he just is playing with that style, with that swagger that you would hope a guy would have coming back from loan. Paulo Ruiz, oh, it's a harsh challenge from Noah Powder asserting authority. Not entirely sure what he's so frustrated about. Paulo Ruiz got the start for Real Salt Lake. He was also on that FC Pinsgau team in Austria with Andrew Brody. And I thought Paulo Ruiz last night was was very impressive. Andrew Brody, Paulo Ruiz, Josh Hurd, another Josh Hurd, member. Josh Hurd, who's waiting on his visa to be able to join this Monarch side. Certainly the confidence, which is all anyone wants to see on loan when they return. And it seems like Andrew Brody, Paolo Ruiz, hopefully Josh Hurd when he makes his appearance. Look, the confidence is flowing from the uh, the players that went on loan to Austria, which is which is nothing but promising for Elliot Ford, the general manager. And Dan Egner. Dan general Egner. Technical director. Hamasin Alave, Freddy Juarez. The whole, whole crew, huh? 
They all have some part to play. <laughs> Be a throw in coming from for the switchbacks. Looks like an entirely different team from what we saw last week against San Diego. The Monarchs seem to be playing with this sense of freedom and energy. And Kyle Coffey's you know, not afraid to make long runs and the runs are being honored. And Dangerous position here now though for Luna the switchbacks. Gets it wide to Siervos. He'll pick up his head, he'll play it back. Ball's going to be served inside the box. Numbers inside the box. Powder able to just get his head on it. It'll be the first corner kick of the afternoon for the Switchbacks FC. That's better from the Switchbacks. Finding space out on the left side. Not feeling rushed. Playing the ball back. Looking for a back post option. And it was dangerous. They need more of that. Ball played inside the box. Slayton collects. I'm getting a laugh of some of the comments on Twitter. What's happening? Matt Montgomery says, how about the coffee is on and it's getting hot? <laughs> it's not bad. We'll give some credit to, to Matt and the RSL Soapbox crew. Yeah, we're big fans of Matt and all of his work. You know, we've got some fun coming from the Switchbacks crew as well. I saw a funny one. Is it a water break or a coffee break? These are just happening all day. You can hear the crew in the background <laughs> having a big chuckle. Uh, got to enjoy stuff. that. And I know one of the fans I've got to mention wanted me to give a shout out to Back Chat Show. The fan ran Switchbacks FC podcast. I'm sure you can find that on any platform where podcasts are found. Monarchs with the two. Nothing lead so far. Big switch going to what Jack Blake. Ball. Inside Sierra Kowski. It's a good challenge from Watabaye. Strong challenge from Watabaye. What a ball from Farnsworth, though. The young lad, the academy product, who looked a little sloppy at times, puts his left foot into it and finds his captain on the far wing. The USL's elite pre-professional platform, USL Academy, allows clubs across the USL to build a pathway to pro soccer by bringing together top local youth talent following the success of the first Academy Cups or Cup events. Excuse me. Clubs can now apply to participate in the USL Academy Cup, kicking off in spring of 2021. For more information, visit usl-academy.com or search hashtag USL Academy on social media. Got other Kyle Coffee jokes. I mean, <laughs> let's just hear them at this point. Sent. Syracuse, Utah native. Spent time at the University of Washington. That's your stomping ground up there, Syracuse, yeah. isn't it? That's right down the street. Also, the interesting known fact, he has a TIE fighter tattooed on his arm. As Blake's going to get an opportunity, but just too far out in front of him, Brody's going to be kicking himself as he was not able to take the pace off that ball as Blake found himself in a good position. That was a dangerous attack from the Monarchs. Another one, Blake running. Sierra Kowski next to Blake, and on the back post was Kyle Coffey. If the ball was played with better touch than what it was from Andrew Brody, you'd imagine it could potentially be 3-0 at this point. Valeski. Had Taylor Pay on his back all night, and he really just seems uncomfortable is maybe the best way to put it. That's what you'd expect from your center back as the ball takes a deflection off our referee. In defense of referee Michael Radchak, those long octopus tentacle-like <laughs> legs can get in the way occasionally. <laughs> Having a little bit of a conversation. Babisi's, it's going to be a draw Paul, I think. Trying to figure it out. Monarchs are frustrated. Labisi trying to figure out what's going on. Radchuk's going to drop it right to Labisi. I'm sure that's how a draw ball works, but. Uh, play on. Play on. Blake gets a touch. Nice job to keep possession. Brody dancing around, and he's, again, just feeling it with that confidence. He's taken out, but no foul called. Bert 
good call. That was, there was no contact there. Noah Powder's going to be open here on the left, and he finds the football. Numbers three on three here, Landon. Monarchs going forward, or Noah Powder plays it wide to Jack Blake. Blake picks up his head, looking back post to Coffey. Coffey headed to Powder, and a wonderful opportunity. The combination play there by the Monarchs, and this is what made them champions in 2019, but unable to get that one in the back of the net. That's really impressive from the Real Monarchs. Perfectly weighted ball from their captain, Blake, to Carl Coffey. He's been a menace all afternoon, knowing... Noah Powder, who started the build-up, was alone on the penalty area. And if Noah Powder had it again, I guarantee you he would have taken a touch. Don't think he quite realized how much space he had to operate in. Here come the switchbacks, though. Opportunity still inside the area. Takes it a flexion and in the back of the nets. Wow. Colorado Springs pull one back here late in stoppage time. Just what the doctor ordered if you're Alan Koch and the switchbacks. Everything has been going the Monarchs' way. It could have well been 3-0. The ball goes down the other side of the pitch. And a scrappy affair happens. Luna with a good shot there. Takes a deflection. Siervos oh. is going to get credit for the goal as he was able to put it back in as Slayton's going to be frustrated that he wasn't able to corral that a little bit better in front of him. And it's 2-1 here late in first half stoppage. Stoppage time brought to you by America First. Credit union, the official credit union of the Real Monarchs. And that's just what the switchbacks needed, Landon. A, a bit of luck. And all of a sudden you find yourself back in the contest when it felt and looked like you were a long way from, from being w in the game. Bit of scrappy play, Jimmy Slayton, the young fella. Got a nice left palm. As the whistle's blown. Halftime whistle is blown. And Colorado switchbacks FC pull one back late. To now make it 2-1 heading to the locker room. Monarchs score in the 30th and 40th minutes. Switchbacks in the 45th plus. And this one's going to be an interesting one. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back with highlights and commentary of the first half next. Today's halftime show is presented by America First Credit Union. If you need access to all-star financial products and services, America First is here to help. By MarketStar. Explore something more at MarketStar. Visit MarketStar.com for careers. By Ford. America's best-selling brand. Great lease offers, big cash back, and low APR financing are waiting for you at your local Ford store. And by Les Olson and Sharp, dominate the pitch with an agile workflow. Sharp and Les Olson Company, the official office technology partners of Real Salt Lake. I swear to fulfill, to the best of my ability, this covenant. Every doctor takes an oath, but not every doctor gets to practice it to its fullest. I will apply for the benefit of the sick all measures required of me. There's a new healthcare system built around the way you live and the way our profession has sworn it to be. And may I long experience the joy of healing those who seek my help. May I be a steward of the new healthcare. We all have needs, hopes, and dreams. Things to do, places to go, and a life to live. And whatever goals you have, America First is here to help you achieve them. We're here to provide the financial tools and services you need to take care of your family, your home, or your business. We're here to help you keep moving forward. Whatever you need, for what matters most, we're here to help. America First, federally insured by NCUA. Hey Justin, Jeanette, what's going on? 
Hey DJ, we're just trying to find out ways to keep fans in our cell gear. And I'm contemplating how to use this F-150 to fight hunger in Utah. Oh, I got it. Have this sweet RSL neck wrap. And thanks to Ford, you can have one too. All proceeds are going to go to help the Utah Food Bank feed families in need. We're hoping to raise $50,000. Fashion that fights hunger? Now this is a winning combination. Can I get the high five? $18,000 can fill a pool of sweet lime jello, buy your personal doggy copter, or maybe get that sweet pair of diamond encrusted jeans you've always needed. Needed? Nobody puts diamondless denim on these crocodiles. <laughs> You'll have to excuse Chuck. He's a little full of himself since we bought and sold our home using Homie. I saved enough money using Homie to move this family thrice. That means three times. If you need to buy a new home, or you want to get the most out of selling your current home, check out Homie today. Here, in places less known, between Utah's mighty five national parks, there are moments that surprise you, between generations and between friends. Somewhere between what you expected and what you never imagined. Start planning at visitutah.com. Atlas Disposal is dedicated to preserving the spaces we share. We also understand the importance of sustaining our resources. We're proud to bring our operations to Utah with technologies like zero emission vehicles and a new recycling system coming to Rio Tinto Stadium starting in 2020. Together, we can keep Utah beautiful and sustainable for generations to come. Johnny, I saw that. See, kids, she does have eyes in the back of her head, but you can help her keep her eyes on the road to get you home safe and sound. That's good advice. Protecting those you love is your top priority, but others may not be so careful. If you've been injured in an accident, choose an attorney who will look out for you all along the way so you don't get blindsided by the insurance companies. Craig Swap and Associates, one call, that's all. I swear to fulfill, to the best of my ability, this covenant. Every doctor takes an oath, but not every doctor gets to practice it to its fullest. I will apply for the benefit of the sick all measures required of me. There's a new health care system built around the way you live and the way our profession has sworn it to be. And may I long experience the joy of healing those who seek my help. May I be a steward of the new health care. $18,000 can fill a pool of sweet lime jello, buy your personal doggy copter, or maybe get that sweet pair of diamond encrusted jeans you've always needed. Needed? Nobody puts diamondless denim on these crocodiles. <laughs> You'll have to excuse Chuck. He's a little full of himself since we bought and sold our home using Homie. I saved enough money using Homie to move this family thrice. That means three times. If you need to buy a new home, or you want to get the most out of selling your current home, check out Homie today.
Until recently, many youth soccer clubs in the U.S. existed independently from senior teams at both the professional and amateur levels. Many soccer communities didn't even have a local senior team their youth players could aspire towards. As the USL continues to grow and bring more senior teams to communities across the country, the USL Academy platform will build a bridge between youth and professional soccer. By driving collaboration between the local youth network and USL senior team, partnerships are formed, allowing for all organizations to work together in the best interest of long-term player development. Once that pathway is established, USL clubs will be able to field a reserve team, providing the top local high school age players a direct roadmap into the championship, League One or League Two, through participation in the new USL Academy League. For more information, visit usl-academy.com. The USL is proud to bring professional soccer back into our communities and across the ESPN family of networks. Follow your local club and don't miss these exciting matches coming up on ESPN2 or ESPN Deportes. One of the key components of USL clubs establishing reserve teams through the USL Academy League is the strategic alignment of long-term player development efforts. As opposed to the scholastic calendar that traditional youth leagues typically follow, and in an effort to further drive vertical integration, the USL Academy League will be the first pre-professional league to align with the American professional soccer calendar. Clubs will begin the year with a month-long preseason in February, followed by a nine-month regular season split into three cycles. spring summer, and fall, concluding with USL Academy League playoffs before an offseason in December and January. Clubs will be able to move players fluidly through programs at select times throughout the year. These transfer windows strategically line the youth network, USL Academy team, and USL senior team even further. For more information, visit usl-academy.com. Home of Real Salt Lake. So we welcome you back in. Monarchs with the 2 1 lead as a late goal was scored by Switchbacks FC to pull things back. And that's going to help Alan Koch feel a lot better about that first half. But if you're Hamas Alave, you've got to be frustrated with what happened. Let's jump in and check out the USL Team of the Week, highlighted by the Player of the Week, Solomon Asante, and a guy that is incredible at what he does. Two goals and an assist in their win on Saturday against LA Galaxy 2 as they won 4 nothing, And he is the reigning USL MVP. And it looks like he might be trying to repeat that here in 2020. Uh, Muhammad was a guy that Colorado Springs players had seen. He scored a wonderful goal against Melvin, the goal of the week. Um, and Monarch saw a few of these guys, uh, Atahenny and Stoneman were two players that the Monarchs got to see here. Atahenny came off the bench against the Monarchs, which was interesting because he was coming off a brace the week <laughs> prior. So uh, interesting Landon Donovan decisions as we put our attention to the scoreboard going around. Check out the games for tonight. A handful of games and a few within, or excuse me, only one in the Western Conference, Tacoma Defiance and Portland Timbers 2 in Group A handful of other games, including an interesting one, Louisville City against St. Louis FC, a second game in that brand new stadium, and hopefully an opportunity to get the first W in that stadium, a place uh, that is an incredible stadium. If you haven't had a chance to check that out, Lynn Family Stadium. We have ourselves a game here at Rio Tinto Stadium, Landon. I think that's what's most important at the minute, Hamas and Alave and the Monarchs would have been licking their chops as the halftime whistle approached 
right before the switchbacks got into the contest with a game against the run of uh, a goal rather against the run of play uh, to bring themselves some life. It'll be interesting to see how the start of the, the second half plays out. Yeah, and one of the things you have to think about is this new rule change here in 2020 with the five substitutions. This game could really be changed by five substitutions. Certainly. Either side. And the Monarchs really are going to have to come out and decide who they want to be. The team that played in the 25th to the 45th minutes or the team that played in the 45th plus in the stoppage time and, and giving up crappy opportunities. Yeah, the switchbacks got off to a good start in that first half, controlled the game, uh, flicked the ball back and forth. The pitch had the Monarchs chasing, and then the Monarchs got on top, found a way to move the ball forward. It all started with Kyle Coffey and the movement uh, up front for the Monarchs. He was making runs. The runs were being honoured, and, uh, and opportunities arose because of it. He was rewarded with the opening goal of the contest after Andrew Brody found Kyle Coffey in some space. A wicked right foot into the top left corner gave the Monarchs the 1-0 victory, uh, the 1-0 lead, I should say. Uh, that late goal, I, I am fascinated, I must admit, to see how the switchbacks respond following the momentum builder that is that late goal in the dying seconds of that first half. It, it just felt and looked like they were out of this contest. The Monarchs had control. They could do what they want. Uh, they should have probably scored with Noah Powder seconds earlier. Uh, but to come back down, like I was talking about, Landon, counter-attacking style of football has been working for the switchbacks. What isn't working for them at the minute is they're down on the scoreboard. The Monarchs are going to be happy to sit back, more so than they would be if the, if the game was even. So you're going to look at a couple members of Wasatch Legion. Nick and Roberts. Faithful here. Um, and the interesting thing to note is you've got to talk about the play of Andrew Brody. A goal and an assist, and he is feeling good and looking good. I think both fullbacks are really impressive, uh, or have been throughout the first 45 minutes. Andrew Brody for number 45, and then the, the addition of Noah Powder from his suspension uh, a week ago. I think both fullbacks have been really dominant for, for the Monarchs, controlling both sides. Of, uh, of the pitch, and then they're playing that long ball in over the top, down the spine to Kyle Coffey. They've got a lot working for them at the minute to the Monarchs. The switchbacks are having success on the counter-attack, but if the Monarchs sit back and play uh, and are content to uh, let see this game out, it's going to be very difficult for the switchbacks to find avenues to go. And we're underway here. Colorado Springs controls, foul by James Moberg. He was frustrated with that call as he did not feel like he came close to touching him. As Davis defending Labisi. Lewis, the Jamaican, back into Labisi. Luna, he'll open up here to this near side. Luna's going to take a crack from distance. Never had eyes for goal. And Slayton maybe yawned a little bit as that one came towards him. A but bit optimistic. You've got to love the optimism and the confidence to come out and hit it from that distance. And that's what Alan Koch is going to need from this side if they really want to find themselves in this game and really causing trouble for this Monarch side. Without trying to re repeat myself a ton, I think, it's, I think it's fascinating and it's going to be interesting to see how the second half unfolds with the momentum that was gained from the switchbacks. Look, they knew they were under the pump in that first half, but they were able to claw their way back. Can they use that to their advantage? As a accidental handball occurred, it'll be a free kick to the Monarchs. In kind of an awkward position of the pitch. Obviously too far out to shoot. I think a in-swinging cross from the captain, Blake, or potentially... Sorry, an out-swinging cross, I should say. In-swinging would be from Noah Powder. Both players standing over this ball. I imagine Blake will be the one to take it. Switchback's going to hold their line. Powder runs over the ball. Blake puts it in. Beautiful oh. ball. Tantalizing just out in front of Taylor Pay. Taylor Pay was going to wish he was just a touch quicker as he found himself in a good position in behind the back line, just unable to get under the cross. A foul by the Monarchs and Kyle Coffey as he stands in front of it to slow up the restart. Referee's done a good job. Michael Radchuk 
so far throughout this contest, controlling the game, hasn't let anything get too uh, out of control. No yellow cards, if I'm not mistaken. No yellow cards so far. You'd have a to stern imagine. warning to Brody. <laughs> and to Farnsworth, I yep. believe. You'd have to imagine a yellow card will appear at some or point. Excuse me, to Bodie, Davis, and Farnsworth. That's right. Ball played as Farnsworth and Davis get touches right there. Ball out in front of Kyle Coffey. And the Monarchs going to fall in to position defensively. Siervos, the goal scorer for switchbacks, his first goal for the switchbacks FC. You always know where Bodie and Davis are, don't you, by that, that head of hair they got <laughs> going on. Or Farnsworth, 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 Farnsworth is what I and Davis. meant to say. I yeah. Think I think that's the second time I've brought this up this <laughs> broadcast. Can you tell I'm jealous? Maybe you need to start growing yours out. If I could, I would, Lance. Just was hidden below that football helmet for so many years. We're going to see a replay look at this. Two hands on the, on the hip. Not much there. A foul nonetheless. I missed it, but it looked like he was possibly shown yellow. I'll wait for confirmation on that one. Uh, we, 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 we were just talking, if I could spit it out, about Farnsworth having a stern talking to by referee midway through that first half. And Coffee surprised. slows things up, gets fouled from behind as Lewis was riding his back like a horse. Swung along the back line of the Monarchs. Monarchs Barnes in work. no rush. Sorry, Landon. And, and no off. rush needed in a, a situation like this. Now you've got to take care of the ball. Be smart about things. It's Taylor Pay with a nice dummy there. It's cheeky from a centre back, isn't it? That goes wrong, and all of a sudden it's one on one for <laughs> Valeski. I'm sure Hamas and Olave would prefer that he does not do stuff like that. But not, uh, not to keep talking about hair, but it may be one of the reasons Hamas and Olave doesn't have any. <laughs> Andrew Brody going forward at speed. He's going to be taken out from behind by Lewis, and we're going to see yellow cards shown to Andre Lewis here in the 51st minutes. Andrew Brody, man, he's not the most technical player, is he? But he just finds a way. Every time he finds the football, he's not afraid to attack. He's got speed to him, and he's confident, maybe most importantly, and he just finds a way to scrap and claw his way in and behind opposing defenders. Another great example of that. Put himself in a very dangerous position, did number 45, Andrew Brody. And he almost looked like he was still going to be able to continue. It just <laughs> got a little tripped up there at the end and went down. You can see the evident frustration from 45, Andrew Brody, who put... Andrew Brody, Noah Powder, and Jack Blake have really been the engines or the sparks to this engine here in this game this afternoon. Do you take a pop? From this distance? Noah Powder's very capable. So is Jack Blake. Both of them will stand over it. Two-man wall in front of them. Look, I know David Beckham would. Very deep. With guys inside the box. Last opportunity. Noah Powder takes a crack. And that one was going towards goal. Wall does its job and takes a deflection. Farnsworth. Into Jack Blake. Back to Taylor Pay. Pay not sure that he's got the best options in front of him. His, he'll play it w back to Jimmy Slayton. Slayton, big ball forward. He's going to try to find Noah Powder. Powder rises high, plays it towards Coffey. Out wide to Sierra Kowski. Sierra Kowski, I think, was a little frustrated. Tried to kick that ball forward. Goes off his shin and out of play. Both teams have a couple players warming up. Monarchs have their whole bench up warming up. Some very capable players, as we'll run through that list here in a little bit. Colorado Springs with their bench, or with two players from their bench up going. Ball forward, up over top. Sierra Kowski is going to be on the run as Melvin's going to come out and clear it. Not able to get it completely out of play. Takes a nice ball for the switchbacks. Ball through, in. Farnsworth there, shot straight at Jimmy Slayton. 
Right down the throat of Jimmy Slayton. Pretty easy save in the end. As Labisi had it all for him. I don't know if Farnsworth just getting to him the end applied enough pressure that it made it uncomfortable, but Labisi had a golden opportunity, but unable to capitalize. It's a good start from the switchbacks. One on one with Jimmy Slayton, and it's all they can ask for throughout this second half. Opportunities will be there. Can they capitalize? It's a good opening look from the switchbacks who have just clawed their way back into this contest despite all of the momentum being in favor of the Monarchs throughout that first half. And Tom, you've got to wonder, does Hamas and Amalave quickly make a change here in the next few to try to change what's going on? It just feels like the Monarchs have come out a little lackadaisical after what happened late in that first half as we're going to see another long throw in coming here from James Moberg. There are, there are options aplenty. Gallardo being one of them that can offer a spark when, when called upon. Vega, uh, another potential substitute that will enter the field midway through this second half. There are certainly options for Hamas and Alave. Ball makes it all the way up into the second deck here. Into the cheap seats, right? Might be a baseball term, but... I, 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 under, I understand. <laughs> I will say, the beauty of this stadium, though, there are, there's no bad seat in the, in the stadium. You buy a ticket up there and the nosebleeds, as they call them, and you get a great view of the mountains. Breathtaking. The sunset, if it's being played at a certain yeah. time of night. And Breathtaking pitch here at Rio Tinto Stadium. Ball is going to go out. Looks like the Monarchs are going to make their first substitution here quickly with Harris coming off. Harris saw a lot of minutes last week. Got the start last week coming on as a substitute this afternoon. Dayon Harris, University of Connecticut product. 20th overall pick in the 2000. 20 MLS Super Draft. A Canadian. Sierra Kowski picks up his head, trying to find options. Nice little cut back there. Finds Davis out wide to Coffee. No one's really in the box for Coffee. Coffee, I think, recognizes that. Pulls, finds opportunity towards Blake, and Blake miss hits it. Comes, I believe, off his hand. The bobbled pass from Coffee to Blake just had a bit too much on it. And Blake had a hard time wrapping his left foot around that. Ball out. It'll be a throw in for the Monarchs. The NWSL Challenge Cup is headed into its stretch run. Be sure to tune in to the championship match next Sunday on CBS to see who takes home the title. Both teams having a hard time finding their point strikers. Christian Valeski, number nine for the switchbacks, and Ryan S Sierra Kowski. Brody cutting through the defense like a knife in warm bread. Plays it out wide to Powder. Powder inside the box, just in front of Sierra Kowski. And that one's going to go out for a goal kick. A good opportunity there for the Monarchs. Just not in position to put that one in the back of the nets as we're going to check out a replay on that one. Andrew Brody again cutting into the center of the park. Noah Powder with space on the left side. His preferred left foot one time cross across the face and Sierra Kowski just a step behind where he would like to be. Otherwise, that would have been a tap-in goal. And the first goal for Sierra Kowski in the Monarchs' colors, that's still... To be, uh, to be waited on, and he'll be itching his way to his first opportunity to celebrate here at Rio Tinto Stadium. It seems like, Landon, there's going to be a couple moves made, two on behalf of the switchbacks, and as you mentioned, Harris will appear for the Monarchs. We'll try to get you those. Harris is going to come on as Sierra Kowski's afternoon will be done. Sierra Kowski, as I was talking about, was just having a hard time 
getting himself in position to be dan- to be that dangerous striker that I'm sure Hamerson Alave would have loved him to be. Eon Harris comes in for Sierra Kowski. Valeski's afternoon's going to be done. Is Austin D Wing? Who was a phenomenal sub last game, had himself a handful of opportunities. Kyle Coffey now is going to be asked to be more of a threat in the air. Harris, not the tallest of types. Sierra Kowski, a far more broader build. Kyle Coffey was having great success making long, deep runs. That, may, that, that job may well go to Harris now. Fresher legs. Kyle Coffey can sit back a tad. Be more of an aerial threat. Ball's going to be played inside the box. Slayton comes out, collects. And he'll survey his options. Other substitution that came on for Colorado. Looks to be Kamara. Check that for you here in a second. Ball is going to go out for a Monarchs throw in. Both teams with some substitutions so far, and that's one of the benefits, having the ability to make five substitutions. When you can do that, making a substitution in the 60th minute is not that dangerous. As Kyle Coffey's fouled from behind, and he goes down. On the pitch, still in a little bit of pain. It's Watabaye coming in aggressively. Got caught napping, did Watabaye, the centre back for the switchbacks. Coffee made a intelligent run from the long throw, bear, throw of uh, Moberg. Found himself in, pro in, in some distress and that's a sloppy challenge from Watabaye clipping the heels of Kyle Coffee, who felt that as he clutches his right ankle. Free kick coming for the Monarchs. That other player that went off was Valeski. Valeski and Luna off. D-Wing and Kamara on. Ball played inside the box. Flicked in and in. Taylor Pay with the goal and a beautiful, beautiful set piece by the Monarchs as that one was done textbook-like and right off the head into the corner of the net and the Monarchs take a 3-1 lead. We talked about this in the first half, Landon. There were a couple corner opportunities, nice balls that were played into the front post, but nobody was making the run. Taylor Pays, the big target for the Monarchs in the air for set pieces and he was on, on, on display there, just delicately flicking the ball with the top of his scone into the far post. Nothing Sean Melvin could do. What a delicate finish that was. Great ball, front post run. Just enough to flick it off the top of the dome and in. Melvin could not do anything there. As the Monarchs take a 3-1 lead and now find themselves in a good situation. But they often say a lead like this is very, very dangerous. Most dangerous lead in football up two goals, is it not? That's what they say. Someone says at least. We'll see what it does for Switchbacks FC. Alan Koch still with a couple substitutions, three substitutions to go. Ball played forward inside the box. Slayton's going to come out. He'll watch that one roll. He's going to take it to the corner. Kill off a little bit of time. Switchbacks in a precarious position at the minute. Look, they love to counterattack. It's where they've been most dangerous. But now they find themselves down two goals. And so they're going to have to force the issue, find a way to regain possession, control the tempo of the game, and put the Monarchs on their heels. As of right now, Monarchs more than content to flick the ball back and forth across their back line when they regain possession. Switchbacks in a far from ideal. Oh, 
Yeah, look at ball that is. Ball Taylor inside Kinney. the box. Pay there. And a good job by the switchbacks to get in front of it. It'll be a corner kick. First of the second half. Second of the match for Colorado Springs. To apologize if I said Powder scored. Powder was the one that delivered the ball, Landon. It was Pay that flicked it on the near post. To Beautiful give the assist by Noah Powder. Corner kick coming. A lot of players inside the box. Traffic in front. Ball flicked. And it looked like it took a deflection. It'll be a second corner kick in succession for Switchbacks FC. Apologies if we caught that wrong. That's all right. Two peas. Two peas in a pod. Taylor Pay wouldn't be happy with us. Pay and powder. Both had great games so far. A lot of traffic, like I mentioned, right in front of Jimmy Slayton. Ball sent in. It's going to go long. Player goes down inside the box. Ball played back in. Flicked. And Burt was right there trying to redirect it through his legs. But Slayton was in front of him. And Stonewall's that one. Well done, Jimmy Slayton. A lot of bodies in front of him there. Ball pinballing around. Did a nice job tracking it. Getting down to his lower left and securing possession. MLS is back, and so is RSL's winning ways. Watch a re-air of the Claret and Cobalt on Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on KMYU. Jack Blake out wide, plays a big ball. Looks like he got more of it than he wanted. More of a driver than a chipping club there. Blake's had a nice game to this point. I thought he was a bit quiet for the captain last week against San Diego. He's found a way to assert himself into the contest against the switchbacks this afternoon. And he's been dangerous in the center of the park, organizing traffic, finding, creating space in front of him and behind him for his fellow teammates to work. Whoa. The fresh legs of Harris was nearly able to close that Sean Melvin clearance down. He comes up, gets the touch, takes it away from Burt. Burt kind of frustrated. Brody will go forward. Brody's been having his way being able to cut in from this right side. Farnsworth, big ball there. Sees Jack Blake, going to play it towards him. And just too much on that one, but the right idea. 66th minute of play. Monarchs lead 3-1 here at Rio Tinto Stadium. An afternoon, mid-afternoon game here in Sandy, Utah, the base of the Wasatch Mountains. All three teams in the Monarchs organization played this weekend. Harris, he'll get a run forward. Harris, just outside the box, plays it inside towards the six and cleared away by Colorado. S Spring switchbacks FC. Because the switchbacks are going to be forced to make a few difficult passes in the center of the park, Turnovers are going to occur, and the Monarchs are going to have opportunities catching the switchbacks off guard. Now, with that said, if the switchbacks are able to utilize the small space provided, they'll have opportunities themselves. It's going to be a fun back-and-forth affair throughout the last 25-odd minutes of this match. Right now, though, a 3-1 lead to the Monarchs. They're in control of this game comfortably point where the Monarchs really don't have much of their bench doing anything. A few guys stretching in the corner. Colorado, Colorado Springs has their guys up, moving. Oh, but a nice little nutmeg there by Andrew Brody. Plays it wide to Harris. Monarchs on the attack. Ball inside the box, just out in front. And Melvin comes up with it and quickly plays the reset. Harris. I love the beautiful nutmeg before this. Andrew Brody's had a cracking game, hasn't he? Getting shout-outs from Chris Winger on Twitter. Legend <laughs> Chris Winger at that. <laughs> Our Lord and Savior Chris <laughs> Winger, I've been told some call him. Long Ball going to be played along the back line. You can see now the Monarchs dropping deeper and deeper. Servos, who's Brody, comes sliding into him. Sierros, the goal scorer for switchbacks. 
Farnsworth and, and Kamara go up. Farnsworth gets the better of him. Powder back to pay. Two peas in a pod. <laughs> oh, you're going to cup it again, Landon. Hey, you're after that connection, they are two peas in a pod. You are asking Beautiful. for it, and I love it. Got to gotta get my dad jokes in for my son and daughter. How is your daughter? She's tuning in today, Emma. She deserves a shout out. Listening to a little soccer. She calls everything baseball, so I'm still trying to work on that. <laughs> we'll get her there. Good. We'll get her there. Growing pains. Yeah. 69th minute of play. Monarchs lead 3 1. It's a foul. By Kamara on Farnsworth. A lot going around on around the USL Championship. And one of the things that I know we talk about often is the stadiums being built. Monarchs playing in this stadium today, but have their home field at Zions Bank Stadium. Switchbacks FC going to build a beautiful new stadium in downtown Colorado Springs, part of a $2.3 billion redevelopment of the downtown area and an 8,000-seat stadium. $25 today, I believe, secures your opportunity to get tickets for that new stadium. going to be opening in 2021. It's also going to hold the host, excuse me, the Division II uh, men's and women's soccer tournaments. So a beautiful pitch. Can't wait to see what that looks like as I've seen renderings. They even have a VR setup where you can check out the check out the stadium. A lot of action going on in the USL. It's fun to see. Obviously the zebra being built. Yeah. Well and that's one of many. I mean there's switchbacks working on theirs. Right. Uh, North Carolina, Indy eleven, Chattanooga, the energy, New Mexico. Ball played inside the box, cleared by the Monarchs. Not completely, though. Mabisi plays it wide. Burt plays the ball inside the box. Header towards goal as Moberg was slate, slow to rise. As D-Wing was able to get the header, but wide of goal. Moberg got caught napping, caught on his heels for a split second. Open header by the switchback substitute. Fresh legs prevailing there, able to leap and the wing, unable to find the target. For the most part, it's been pretty comfortable for Jimmy Slayton, who's in his second consecutive start for the Monarchs. Looks rather comfortable. Sam Brown. Pinch and Harris has been finding a lot of success down this right wing. Harris, he'll take a crack right at Melvin. Melvin has to push it away, coming right back in the path. But switchback's able to deal with it. Harris has been awfully lively down that right wing since his introduction into this contest. A handful of minutes to go now. Switchbacks have to be careful. Left back number two, Servos. The goal Creeping scorer. forward. Looking. Looks like we're going to have another couple substitutions. Still inside the area. Slayton's going to get to it. Burt goes off the pitch. So we've got a, two substitutions coming here momentarily for Switchbacks FC. 72nd minute of play. It's now or never for the Switchbacks. Down two goals. Just under 20 minutes of play left. If they're going to find a way back into this game, they're going to have to... Provide something. They're gonna. They're gonna require a spark off the bench. Fresh legs. It's a hot day here in Salt Lake City, Sandy, Utah. They're gonna need something. Brody. Brody Two headers on it. it. Ooh, it's getting taken out by Lewis, and Lewis is gonna see yellow 
And that will be his second yellow card. So he's going to see red here in the 73rd for a rough challenge. And that's where the substitution was going, it looked like, from the bench. So, man, game changer there is Andrew Brody's down. We've seen a red card here with Lewis leaving the match. Yellow card in the 51st and 73rd. Means he's done for the afternoon, as well as next match against Austin Bold next week. And I don't know if the center referee was 100% sure that he already shown him yellow, but we'll take a replay look at this one. As Blake gets it back to him, he came in maybe, ooh, a little reckless, yep. Studs were showing. Yep. yep. That's, a, that's a yellow card. He looks bewildered for whatever reason, pleading his innocence. I think deep down he knew he was in from strife. And what was interesting was the switchbacks had two substitutions ready to come on. When that challenge was made and Lewis saw his second yellow and red, number six, Argueta, evidently frustrated. It was almost as if number six was going to make an appearance for Lewis. And I think that was the case. R or excuse me, Rivas was coming on for him. And I think now we'll see the substitution as you're going to see Argetta coming on for Aiden Daniels. And then you're going to see Rivas come on for number 16, Arturo Dispie. Dispie, excuse me. Well, the that's going to be a substitution. They're going to sacrifice. The going just got tougher for the switchbacks. I think that's fair to say. I think I'm not... I think I'm not going out on a limb by saying that. Down two goals, now down a man. With time running out. Well, and, and Aiden Daniels, a guy that scored a goal last week coming off and wasn't the plan for him to come off, but had to come off due to that double yellow. Because there's a mistake. Jordan Burt And you've got to wonder if the, the wheels start to fall off right here for Colorado Springs. And if you're Alan Koch, there's not much you can do. You can make one more substitution, so you can make one change. But you've got just under 20 minutes, and you down two goals and down a player. Uh, I'm no rocket scientist, but let's just assume this game was tied. Going down a man certainly doesn't help. They're down two goals on top of that. Jack Blake with the corner kick. Swung in. Siervos clears it. Monarchs still with the ball. See if they can recycle it back into the area. Brody's going to go forward. Slaloming through. Trying to find Harris. Played Harris out wide when Harris was cutting in. Brody and Harris. Right on the same page. Brody and Harris have had great success since Harris's arrival. As we uh, trot on towards the... Second and last hydration break for the players. I think the message from Hamas and Alave will be rather simple. Keep control of possession. Be in no rush to move forward. And let this clock find a way to find the 90 minutes. And a rather comfortable three points will be coming the Monarchs' way. Let's check out the goals of the match so far. And there's been some dandies as you're going to check out the first goal. Luna with the sloppy mistake. Andrew Brody finds Kyle Coffey, who was just pecking his way at the goal prior to this. First strike, rewarded for his efforts. Great technique. Swiping at the football with his laces. Andrew Brody had a part to play in the second. Just too easy. Cuts back on his non-preferred left. Pokes the ball into the bottom left-hand corner. Looked ready to pass it to Sierra Kowski, but picked up his head and thought, why not? Options are plenty. The Monarchs were on top. And then this was the interesting one. And the weird part is it comes off one hand on the save, deflects off his other, and really pops up in a generous situation for Siervos. But nonetheless, a goal that made things really kind of interesting at the start of the half. And here's the third. A comfortable finish from Taylor Pay. What a delivery from Noah Powder. Taylor Pay asking for all of his neck muscles to be in full swing to finish that delivery off from Noah Powder. It's 
Since 1947, Select has been the leader in soccer ball quality and innovation. Select is the official ball supplier of the USL Championship and many of the elite leagues throughout Europe. For the latest Select products and special offers, please visit SelectSportAmerica.com. Good header there. And an opportunity, Harris going forward. Harris is on his horse and riding hot and heavy, but unable to get around Siervos and a foul called. Harris has some toe to him, doesn't he? He was moving quickly. University of Connecticut product. Showed a bit of tecker there. Looks like Monarch's going to make a substitution. A World Cup veteran. One of the few that you can say that for here in the USL Championship. Ricardo Avila coming back in his first game back. Ball played inside the box, cleared away by Farnsworth. Monarchs can't get complacent with a 3-1 lead. Ricardo Avila, like I was mentioning, coming on here momentarily, but played in, in the last World Cup. And a guy that's coming off a broken, a nasty broken bone. At Zions Bank Stadium, good to see him healthy and happy as he was off for almost a full year. Big moment in his career as he returns to competitive football. Always good to see those devastating injuries as he returns. It looks like Alan Koch is going to also make his final substitution, Landon. He's throwing everything plus the kitchen sink forward to see if he can make it. Farnsworth. Moberg. Fans follow the Real Monarchs and the rest of the USL Championship all season long in ESPN Plus home to the USL, MLS, UFC, and more. Join the nearly 8 million sports fans who have already discovered ESPN Plus and watch the championship live every week. Sign up today at ESPNPlus.com. It's on the best money I spend having a subscription to ESPN Plus. I think my wife's tuning in on the feed on ESPN Plus right now Very on that nice. account. So, Putting good use to it. Brody, little shove from the back. As he's fouled, it'll be a free kick coming for the Monarchs. Looks like we're going to have both our substitutions. Kyle Coffey making way for Avila. Avila is going to come on after making his return to the Monarchs after that broken bonus. What's well, got to be a big moment for him. I thought Kyle Coffey was on his way to MVP honors, man of the match honors. But for me, Andrew Brody, Landon, has overtaken. I think Andrew Brody's been spectacular. Nonetheless, Kyle Coffey was exquisite, specifically throughout that first half. Substitution on the opposite side. George Labisi makes way. The South African, who... Oh, dear. Advantage played. Avila gets his first touch as he stands up. The attacking player. As Harris looks like he was pushed from behind, but referees his ball. That was a sloppy uh, play from Farnsworth there at left back, turning the ball over, asking a lot of Avila, who hasn't made or played much competitive soccer. Pepe, as they call him. Making a monumental challenge in the area. I gotta imagine something that's going to be a challenge for him is fitness. When you come off an injury like that, running is not something you're getting a ton of. Certainly. I think speed of play as well is going to take a, a bit to get used to. Ball played out wide. Karamoto plays it in towards deflects off pay, and Brody's going to get under the ball. Monarch's going to try to clear their line. Harris, nice job with some hold-up play. It's being fouled from behind. Something probably worth talking about for the second week in a row. Landon, the Black Lives Matter armbands being worn by both 
teams. The USL, the League One and its clubs and the players from across the USL have united against racism and are peacefully demonstrating before matches, as we saw. But one of the other ways is that armband, and, and you've got to love to see the unity by these sides. Certainly. And by leagues and players across the world right now. An important message that they're peacefully getting across. Andrew Brody, fearless. Brody gets sandwiched. He's going to get a little talk after the fact. It's been a long time. Switchbacks FC player. Moberg. Sorry, Mike went a little quiet. These masks make for a little fun. The whole world trying to deal with this pandemic. That's why, they went That's why they're paying us the big bucks, Landon, <laughs> to operate with masks on. Easier said than done. <laughs> Gotta love it. Fans on in attendance here wearing masks, and like we mentioned earlier in the game, have been asked to keep that on unless they're actively, and actively was in bold letters, eating or drinking. I would. Ball played up over top. Siervos there. Moberg will head it out of play. And it'll be a throw in for the switchbacks. Monarchs with a couple substitution opportunities still available. Switchbacks FC have played their hand here in the 85th. All five substitutions used for them. No substitutions. Back to Siervos. Geta, heavy touch, still able to maintain it. He's going to get the return pass. Nice little turn there from him. Back to Burt. Burt, ball inside. Flag up off the post, but not that one's not going to count as the first ball. The flag came up, and the offside flag is up from our referee on the far side. It's the wing finding himself in an offside position. The ball by Ferreira. Intended for his attacking teammate. The wing caught off guard, hoping to be in an onside position. Not to be. Nonetheless, inside the 86th minute here. Time certainly running out for the switchbacks. But they're not giving up hope. Continuing to press the issue and try and find a last gasp effort to at least put some added pressure onto the Monarchs as this game winds to a close. Another USL note, two games to open the 2020 League One season. Three new clubs, Union Omaha, Fort Lauderdale CF, and New England Revolutions 2. Or excuse me, Revolution 2. Revolutions would be a car or a wheel, something turning, like the Monarchs today, firing on all cylinders. Certainly found their groove, haven't they? No, hadn't scored a goal Nice little turn there. Goes down inside the box. Looked like he was looking for that PK as he brought up the landing gear quickly. Ball played from Davis trying to find Jack Blake. I know there's a little frustration from those two as it, they were just not quite on the same page. One of those where maybe more experience shows that you just need to keep possession in a moment like that. That's another strong going back to the Avala tackle. It's another strong challenge from him inside the area. Have to be careful. He did just that, and, you know, he hasn't had many minutes today, and he won't. Uh, but it's been a, an impressive showing from the veteran coming off that horrific injury 12 months or so ago. Monarchs working closer and closer to this three points this afternoon, a big three points for them as they were sitting pointless here in 2020 in the year that they get to defend their championship. And sometimes that's the toughest spot to be in, being the defending champion, coming in. And this season, obviously a little weird, came off a loss in San Antonio, one nothing, came back to play after 17 weeks, playing the loyal, and feeling like they got robbed with two goals that right. really, after looking at replays, I can confidently say that both of them were goals. Sure. But they lost that game. So 0-2-0 on the season, zero points. And so today was really one of those moments where you had to make a statement. 
we're capable of scoring goals, and we're capable of playing in this group. Sure, and there's so many questions that need to be answered. The switchbacks make last gasp attempt. Kamara, nice little cut, trying to get around pay. Down but Moberg was there. there. Going back to the Monarchs, however, we talked about it last week. It'll be a conversation we, we, we continue to have throughout the season. They're the hunted now. They, they, they're not hunting. They also happen to lose a number of talented players. Justin Portillo, Douglas Martinez, to name a few. Michael Chang. Michael Chang. And that's going to be one of the challenges as you shift over teams, as you have players that move up, players that move on. Uh, you know, we're going to get to see one of those guys here that playing for New Mexico United in Kalen Ryden, a big center back presence. As these changes happen, that's really where it shows if you've got an organization that's committed to, to working hard, building a team that's going to be capable year in and year out. And the Monarchs are showing their capable side. Certainly. They, they just need some of the younger players to develop. I think Farnsworth, Bodie Davis, she's been promising last week, this week. Will they live up to the likes of what Douglas Martinez offered last year? Opportunity. Dewig inside the area, standing in front of Slayton. Ball crossed to Burtz, and a goal there for Switchbacks FC here in the 90th minute of play. It is 3-2 here, and things get a little tighter. Wow. Not as comfortable for the Monarchs as Colorado Springs. Down the man, score a goal. Nice little pass there by... D-wing two. Boy, I was just Burt. talking about if the likes of Farnsworth and Davies could potentially step up and offer a fair bit, and Farnsworth just got caught napping in a position on the pitch where you just can't do it at this level. The wing there, cool, calm, collected, finds his running teammate in Burt and a tapping goal. Credit the switchbacks. They haven't given up as we enter stoppage time. See how much the fourth ref referee holds up. Down a man, down two goals. Sounds like there'll be four minutes of stoppage time. Plenty of time for the switchbacks to potentially have one last gasp effort to pinch a point. As Jordan Downs, the fourth referee, does confirm the four extra minutes will be added to this match. And that's America first stoppage time. Brought to you by America First, the official credit union of the Real Monarchs. Four minutes. See what's going to happen. It looks like Thomas and Olave is going to make his third substitution. Jimenez, the Argentine, is going to come on maybe to sure things up in the back for the Monarchs. Ball inside. Kurimoto. Little pass around, still trying. A battle there. Ball on the ground. It's going to be Monarchs free kick, it looks like. Free kick coming for the Monarchs. Now's when you got to kill off the game, Tom, and just figure out how to make it just maybe slow up a little bit, keep possession, and be smart about it. Is Andrew Brody, his afternoon's going to be done, and he has to be probably the guy that we say is the man of the match today. I don't know if you could debate that. Andrew Brody, a goal and an assist. As he stretches out the hamstrings and calves. He's a good been working tirelessly up that right-hand side. and Good 90 minutes of soccer for him. I was going to ask who you thought your man of the match was. Mine was going to be number 45, Andrew Brody. And this is such a dangerous position now for Hammerson, Alava, and the Monarchs. They desperately need three points yet to have it this season. As you alluded to earlier, the switchbacks down a man. They were down two goals. They were able to find a goal right as we entered stoppage time, and they've got nothing to lose. Yep, time to close up shop. But if you're Alan Koch, you've got to be hoping that some miracle you can figure out to get one back down a man. But can you find an opportunity? Jack Blake. Under the ball, tries to play it to Harris. Jimenez. The avenue for the switch max is going to be on the ground. It's going to be down the middle. Long balls playing in to the area. Probably aren't going to suffice. They 
don't have a ton of tall timber up there. As Jimmy Slayton should. Comes out, heads it nicely. Jack Blake, he's going to be fouled from behind. That was an no foul called. Foul. Blake, he'll push wide. Servos, ball inside the area. Slayton calls for it, and Slayton collects. Jimmy Slayton rises high and does his job perfectly. He'll lay down, kill off a few extra seconds. Roughly one more minute to play here at Rio Tinto Stadium. The Monarchs have been very impressive on top for the majority of this game, but the switchbacks have just been pestering away and continue to find themselves in the contest. A couple of sloppy goals, but goals nonetheless for the switchbacks. If you're Alan Cox, frustration in many ways for what happened, but definitely some optimistic things to look at. A few players that played very well. Sierros getting his first goal. And you'd have to think as the seconds tick on by, final 15 seconds, this will be the last effort that head referee Michael Radchuk will allow. Nice build up there. Kamara will go towards the touchline. Jimenez and Moberg defending him comes off and it'll be a corner kick wow, for Switchbacks FC. And this is when you bring up the keeper. Certainly. Be shocked if you don't see Melvin sprinting up the pitch to get in on this action. Maybe not. He's not even going to throw all numbers in there. I'm He's a big boy. I don't know why <laughs> you wouldn't have him in there throwing big his weight around. Corner kick ball played inside the box. And that one's in. What a baye. And man alive, the Monarchs crumble here late. Oh, my word. Sweet beard of Zeus Landon. Hammerson Alave. Furious and the Monarchs team. at the death give up a goal and Colorado Springs down a man, down two goals, score too late, one in stoppage time with Wadabaya as he's going to see yellow for his shirt off. But you're going to see a replay look at this. And man, he rose up nicely and buried that one in the back of the net. Just poor marking defensively from the Monarchs. Oh, and it might have been an own goal potentially from Taylor Pay. I'm not entirely sure if that was flicked on by Watabaye and into the back of Pay. Nonetheless, it's a goal for the switchbacks. The Colorado Springs find a way, and it was what we were dreading for Hammerson Alave and the Monarchs. We were talking about the most dangerous lead in football, up two goals, and Exhibit A here at Rio Tinto Stadium this afternoon, Landon. Clock still ticking. A foul there on the Monarchs. I can't imagine there's going to be much more than this left. And that's the end of the game. Frustration from the Monarchs bench as Colorado Springs switchbacks have to feel incredibly fortunate to be a man down and secure three points. 3-3 three, three in an exciting game here at Rio Tinto Stadium. That's how this match ends up. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back with final thoughts after this. Today's game is brought to you by Ford, America's best-selling brand. Great lease offers, big cash back, and low APR financing are waiting for you at your local Ford store. By MarketStar. Explore something more at MarketStar. Visit MarketStar.com for careers. By Steward Healthcare, the official healthcare provider of Rail Monarchs. Visit StewardUtah.org. We all have needs, hopes, and dreams. Things to do, places to go, and a life to live. And whatever goals you have, America First is here to help you achieve them. We're here to provide the financial tools and services you need to take care of your family, your home, or your business. We're here to help you keep moving forward. Whatever you need for what matters most, we're here to help. America First, federally insured by NCUA. Here, in places less known, between Utah's mighty five national parks, there are moments that surprise you. 
between generations and between friends. Somewhere between what you expected and what you never imagined. Start planning at visitutah.com. disposal is dedicated to preserving the spaces we share. We also understand the importance of sustaining our resources. We're proud to bring our operations to Utah with technologies like zero emission vehicles and a new recycling system coming to Rio Tinto Stadium starting in 2020. Together, we can keep Utah beautiful and sustainable for generations to come. Hey Justin, Jeanette, what's going on? Hey DJ, we're just trying to find out ways to keep fans in RSL gear. And I'm contemplating how to use this F-150 to fight hunger in Utah. Oh, I got it. Have this sweet RSL neck wrap. And thanks to Ford, you can have one too. All proceeds are going to go to help the Utah Food Bank feed families in need. We're hoping to raise $50,000. Fashion that fights hunger? Now this is a winning combination. Can I get a high five? Really? to go and a life to live and whatever goals you have America First is here to help you achieve them we're here to provide the financial tools and services you need to take care of your family your home or your business we're here to help you keep moving forward whatever you need for what matters most we're here to help America First federally insured by NCUA hey Justin Jeanette what's going on Hey DJ, we're just trying to find out ways to keep fans in our cell gear. And I'm contemplating how to use this F-150 to fight hunger in Utah. Oh, I got it. Have this sweet RSL neck wrap. And thanks to Ford, you can have one too. All proceeds are going to go to help the Utah Food Bank feed families in need. We're hoping to raise $50,000. Fashion that fights hunger? Now this is a winning combination. Can I get a high five? Nice day for a ride. Hey, you're Craig Swat. You know, not everyone sees you when you're on two wheels. So stay alert and always keep your eyes on the path ahead. That's good advice. See you at the top. Nice shorts. You can't always predict what might sneak up and catch you by surprise. If you've been hurt by the carelessness of others, choose the law firm that will go the distance to get you the settlement you deserve. Craig Swap and Associates, one call, that's all. MLS is back, and so is RSL's winning ways. Watch the re-air of the Claret and Cobalts win Tuesday night, 8 p.m. on KMYU. Also, the NWSL Challenge Cup is heading into its stretch run. Be sure to tune into the championship match next Sunday on CBS to see who takes home the title. 3-3 three, three draw here at Rio Tinto Stadium in what's got to be frustration and elation from... Colorado Springs Switchbacks FC 
And Tom, I don't really even know what to say. It just felt incomplete. The Monarchs controlled a lot of the game. We're up a man, and you just felt like we're going to coast to three points. But I think that was the mistake, thinking they were going to coast. Well, that was hard to wrap your head around, wasn't it? Uh, from, from the Monarchs' perspective, Hamerson Alave surely is breaking something in the locker room at the minute. He must be absolutely livid. Up a man, up two goals late in that, go in that game. And they were unable to close things out. They, they didn't look as though their head was in the game late in it. They thought it was all wrapped and, and, and done. But credit the switchbacks. They just kept pestering away, kept peppering. They weren't afraid to take the game on. And they're rewarded late with that, uh, that, that goal from Watabaye at the death. Uh, fun game to follow. Uh, the Monarchs, I thought, were the better team. But nonetheless, a 3-3 draw in the end. Let's check out the defensive play of the game. This play brought to you by Beeline Pest Control, Utah's favorite pest control company serving Utah for over 20 years. As you're going to see a save here coming up from Melvin. Just that one hand to deny Powder, and I think Powder felt like that was goal-bound, and it looks goal-bound from that first angle, but a nice left palm from Melvin to keep it out of the back of the net, and that's your defensive play of the game brought to you by Beeline Pest Control. Powder had more space than I thought he realized he could have taken a touch and pretty calmly put that into the back of the net. Instead, he slashed at it. And a nice save by Sean Melvin. Monarchs, what a game, Landon. Monarchs have a schedule that's a little interesting coming up here, but the next home game will be here Saturday, August 15th, so almost a month from now, back against El Paso Locomotive. Tom Hackett, I'm Landon Southwick from our wonderful production team making it happen here at Zions Bank Stadium. Thanks for tuning in this afternoon. We'll catch you next time here on ESPN+. Plus. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.